Blow the Ocean 100% All Gems All Chapters Showcase from Heavenwana. Hey, I am Heppenwana. I'm going to be running uh, Below the Ocean. Uh, this isn't an official category. If you look on SRC, this is more of a showcase of all the categories. Each chapter in this game serves as its own uh, category or two categories, either any percent or harm percent. We're going harm percent all of these because they're really fast and it's such a good game. You can't stop with just one chapter. Uh, Herm percent means each chapter has a gem count. You can see it in this menu right here. Um, we want to get every single gem. Also, because I like to make things a little more fun, put a little challenge on myself, I'm going to donate $2 for every death I have during this run. Um, if anyone wants to join along, it could be some fun. There are some intended deaths, so I'm definitely leaving with a donation going out there. Um, and. I'd say there's probably in the neighborhood of a dozen, maybe up to 20 deaths. So if you feel like joining me on that, that would be great. If you don't, maybe tell a friend about this marathon for every death I have, you know, get the word out there. So we're going to get started. I am going to hit speed run mode here and time will start at that point. Uh, time will end when uh, we get to a low dancing scene after the fourth chapter. So time will start in three, two, one, go. All right, so Below the Ocean is a really cool one-bit style retro-inspired game. You are just this little unnamed guy who's diving through the ocean. You are tethered to air tanks. We wanna get gems. Obviously, spikes are going to be bad news for us. So like it said back there, collect the gems at your own risk. We are going to make that risk. And if we die a couple times, eh, just more money raised for a great cause. Um, we also can use our tether to our advantage. So our tether can limit our movement, but we can also use it with this water physics to swing around. So like right here, I'm going to loop my tether around that brick. It's going to shorten it just a tiny bit, which will let me get up here. We're going to go for a very dangerous gem right here. We can't get up that wall, obviously. So instead, we're going once again, use a rock to change our tether length. And there we go. Once again, good. So something else fun about this game is there's a lot of different game mechanics that I get into with speedrunning. And one of the mechanics that means a lot to games I play is coyote jumps. This game has coyote jumps from wall jumps. So a coyote jump is named after like Wiley Coyote, where if you are falling, if you run off a cliff, you might have a couple extra pixels that you could still jump. On this game, it has coyote jumps when you're falling off of walls that we'll use occasionally, like we did on that room a couple rooms back. We also have these air bubbles that give us a double jump, but also they let us ride these currents. In order to speed run, we want to try and take advantage of some things. So here we want to keep this air bubble and we are going to keep it instead of using it for a second jump because right here, instead of going down and back up with that bubble in the bottom left, we could just keep going. This game, even though it might offer you some tools like these bubbles, it doesn't mean you have to use them right when they seem like they're needed. We burst our bubble there because otherwise the air current would have kept pushing us up and we definitely want to go back down after getting that gem. And here we're going to reach the final gem for chapter one. Gotta be very careful here because you don't want to burst your bubble early, but you don't want to burst it too late or you'll end up hitting those spikes. We're just going to kind of speed strat through this room right here. And we're about to take our first intentional death because we want to save time. And detangling my tether right there was going to take extra time. One thing you'll see anytime I'm running a game, it is one that always has um, death mechanics that you could kill your character at any time. Another intentional death, because you don't want to detangle. We're going to do another, I think two of those on this chapter alone. So definitely we're donating money to a great cause. Um, but we are going to use this electricity, open some doors. We'll use death mechanics again right here because 
I don't want to detangle my tether. We're going to do one more of those coming up soon. Detangling a tether just takes too much time. Anytime you have to backtrack, for me, that is not something I want to do on a speed run. I always want to be moving forward. So if I could avoid that backtracking, you know I'm going to go for that. So we are almost done with chapter one. Just grab that air bottle right there and we're going to do a big jump, get electricity, get tangled a little, and final death abuse of this stage. And we're about to end chapter one. We're going to find our treasure. We went below the ocean, hence the name of the game, and found our treasure down there. Each of these chapters is going to offer a different cool little, um, a different cool thing. I am going to put four down for how many deaths. It's hard to keep track at the end of this to see how many total deaths I will have. And now we're on chapter two. But each of these chapters is going to have a different song, which is cool because the music on this game is super chill. But also, oh, that was unintended death right there. I fell through in a weird way. <laughs> we wanted to go here and loop around to different tether spots. I've actually never done that mistakes before, so always something new, something fun. But each stage is also going to have a new mechanic or two. So like we had those white air bubbles in the first chapter. This chapter, we're going to have a different type of bop a turtle for a speed boost. By the way, I feel bad for bopping that turtle because cute little turtle, but we need that speed boost. But this one's going to offer some new mechanics beyond those uh, white bubbles. Another important thing that I didn't mention before about the tether is not just does the tether limit where you could go or serve as kind of web swinging like an underwater Spider-Man. Uh, the tether also has its own physics, so sometimes it can kink in ways that could cause a lot of problems for you. We kept this air bubble so we could take that shortcut, not the intended route there. The intended route would have been waiting to go around these little crabs. Crabs are bad news. But as we go through, the tether is going to have its own physics from time to time that will cause us some problems. And it just makes the game extra fun because it's almost like a type of RNG. Had to slow down for those crabs for a second. By the way, if you want to join me on donating for all my debts, there's a hidden gem up here if you saw that little sparkle. Um, if you want to join me, there is another run I'm going to be doing after this one for Love 3, and there is a bid war for what uh, style of level I'm going to play for part of Love 3. So if you want to join me on donations or just do a donation without debts in mind, please consider donating. Uh, you can affect what I'm going to be running coming up, which is always a lot of fun. We have a nice little secret over here. Once again, we're bopping plenty of turtles. Don't worry, no turtles were actually harmed in the bopping of them to get this gem. They are perfectly fine afterwards. Here we're going to see the tether starting to play a little tricky on me. Luckily it worked in my favor, but you could see it started to lift me up, which was not something we wanted to necessarily ooh, see. So here's the new mechanic for this stage besides the turtles and the crabs, blue bubbles. You get an extra jump, but also a little propulsion. By the way, dying in this room is bad news because if you reset the cycle in this room, that turtle is not where you want him to be and that will slow you down considerably. You'll have to wait for the turtle. So certain spots in this game are very cycle based and you want to be very mindful of staying on the right cycle. In fact, we're going to take a little death abuse later on because we won't like the cycle that we naturally get in the room. With the blue bubbles or anything that give you propulsion, you could stretch your tether beyond its length, which is what we did right back there to uh, reach that air tank. Otherwise, we would have had to take a different tank that was a little slower. We don't want to go slow, obviously. Um, here we've got a very challenging room. I am going to go for the speedrun strats. This is not necessarily easy. So literally no time left on my countdown before I would have died of no air. But doing that, you save a 
oh, probably about 20 seconds. This room, we are going to skip the whole room and just go up here. Sometimes the skips are very obvious, sometimes not as much. We're going to just use these blue bubbles like little jetpacks and get clean on out of here. We have another hidden gem right here. This hidden gem, notice this hermit crab is sparkling. This is also a place you could soft lock out from 100% if you're not careful. If you bop that uh, hermit crab through the one-way door that we entered the room with, then we would actually have it out of the room and we can never get it again unless we reset our run. We're going to use this electricity, kill those fishes. If you kill all the fishes, the door opens. Once again, same general idea with that hermit crab. We're just going to keep taking advantage of um, electricity as we go through this run, which sounds dangerous being under the water, but that's what we're going to do. We're also going to go quick here and not have to grab that air down there. Another new mechanic in World 2 are the slingshots. We do that and we could just go through this room nice and quick. We're going to use more slingshots here to find another well hidden gem. Fling ourselves way up here and we have a puzzle room. Puzzle is not too hard to solve. Luckily, I know the answer, but we need hermit crabs over there. And once you get all three, the door opens and there we go. And back to that room we were in. Sadly, we can't just death warp back. We have to take our time and swim back down to where we were. Fling ourselves real far, blind, you know, blind jump of faith right there. If you go too far, you'll hit those spikes. Not far enough, you're going to be in a slower part of the stage. And like I said, speed run, we want to keep moving nice and fast. We're going to try another skip here where we try to avoid that tether bottle right there. Perfect. Breaking off from that tether bottle would add probably about potentially 15 seconds that room. And we definitely don't want to lose 15 seconds like that. So here we need to kill all the fish in order to get through this room. Unfortunately, I re-tethered, which slowed me down just a little bit there. And we are almost done with chapter two. Chapter two and chapter four are the hardest ones in terms of possibly soft locking into a uh, any percent run instead of a hundred percent. So we want to just keep going. Yep, intentional deaths do count. Uh, so right here we ended up with one death. Don't worry, there are going to be a lot more deaths to put more money where my intentions are, which is towards this great cause, because we are going to, we're going to have messier deaths coming up. So in this stage, we have a new idea, which is hearkening back to Metroid, the original, going left. We went left to find one of these little pips. You get four pips and you could detether yourself. And that sounds dangerous, but we're going to use that to our advantage. By the way, I just want to say this is a great cause, so consider supporting. Um, adoption means a lot to my family. Uh, my family is the loving family it is because of adoption. Uh, my mom and my uncle both were adopted, so real great cause. Consider supporting it. Here we took a quick route to get that door latch. New mechanic in this stage. These bottles that are clear will let you float upside down. When you're floating upside down, your movement gets a little bit wonky. Like it becomes very fast movement. You have free movement. It is kind of a breath of fresh air and kind of a frightening experience, but we could use it to uh, bust breakable walls. Like you could see at the very top, what obviously looks breakable in the middle top of the screen. So we're just going to pop right through that. We also have a very hidden gem because of these breakable blocks right here. It was hard to tell that is breakable. One of the hardest secrets to find in this whole game. This game, by way, playing it uh, casually, it is just a blast. The controls are really fun. Uh, the exploration feel is great. 
and just discovering where all these secrets are is amazing. Keeping that bubble from several rooms back. Oh, my tether tried fighting me, but keeping that bubble let us do a little skip. By the way, talking about intentional deaths or all deaths, well, intentional death is coming up right here because we are tangled. So there's death number two for this chapter. I would expect more deaths are coming, especially uh, chapter three and four really do offer a lot of potential for, for bad things to happen. In fact, we are going to take probably about three intentional deaths in one room coming up. I actually did not want to do an intentional death there, but I accidentally hit the button. Whoops. <laughs> Mistakes are made and money is raised. So we want to make sure definitely don't leave the room until you get the gem. By the way, if I do miss any gem on this run, I will just donate $10 per gem because I promised a hern percent and you're not getting a hern percent if I don't get all the gems. So here we want to go very careful. This room, we are not taking the safe route of grabbing that air. We are going to keep going. We are almost out of air and barely got to this bubble just in time. Yep, we are going to keep raising money through deaths because it's one thing I like. I like games where you could do uh, death warps, death abuse, pretty much things that, you know, allow you to avoid going backwards if possible because speedrunning i don't want to go you know i never want to go um backwards i don't want to backtrack it's too slow it's just not the right feel so here we're going to grab this bubble and keep it because these walls down here that are without much texture cannot be grabbed and if we didn't keep that bubble we would not have been able to um float back up and we would have died. Intentional death here, because I mentioned cycles, the cycle in this room, if we want to jump over that guy and not wait about five seconds, we got to just take the death, reset the cycle and keep moving. We are going to keep raising money with deaths. Plenty of them coming up. Some are going to be more intentional than others. Luckily, I got through that room. Avoid that little bouncy pad. It'll bounce you in the ceiling which is definitely not what you want when ceilings lined with spikes. This room, we're going to do some good quick maneuvering using this bubble. We're going to avoid touching the ground on the entire bottom area. These little grapple claws can be your friends, but they can also be your enemy depending on where they grab you. So uh, it's very important. <laughs> Inappropriate route for death, but you know, sometimes it's just, just fun. Plus also it's, it's rooting for good charitable giving because this is a fantastic cause. I love the Real Hope Project. I love what they are bringing. The presentations that ooh, need a little bit more momentum. There we go. Sometimes it's hard to get that momentum right. Let's see if we can avoid him. Good. Avoiding that gave us a little bit quicker of a route. We are going... We are going to accidentally not hit jump right there and take a death that was not intended, but hey, that would be two more dollars. This room, in order to get this gem, we really have to push our, our breathlessness. Luckily we got through. So we are just gonna keep going and see if I could get through here. This one is tricky because that claw has a habit of letting you drop. And we definitely don't want it to drop us right onto spikes. We're just going to blast through this room nice and fast. And we're about to get into, after this room is a room we're going to take a couple intentional deaths to save some time. So we are going to raise another probably $6 in this room. So we want to grab all four of these little pips. It is far quicker to, after you grab one, to not backtrack and instead take the intentional death. Here's another one. This room is all about bringing that money in. 
you know, bring money in for a great cause. I am always happy to do that. And then we are going to see if we get in our death here. We are probably going to get one. Yeah. That jellyfish, it is almost... My controller got a little silly right there. That jellyfish is almost frame perfect to avoid. So if you are slightly off with how little air you have, you will probably face death. But it's all fine. You know, just means this room brought in about $8 for me and whatever anyone feels like joining in for. Um, even if it's just telling a friend for every one of my deaths, tell a friend about this marathon. Make sure everyone's watching, joining in. So here we are electric. We will kill these guys, but you have to wait between each one so that you don't get uh, killed before the charge is back. And yeah, that was one more intentional death because we would have had to detangle a fair amount. Let's come on. There we go. D, mm, come on, there we go, D-Tether. This is the one time we don't run off to the right. The treasure is actually in the middle of the screen. I love this game. I, This game, once I started playing it, it was so addictive. If you want like the most chill and fun of speedrun games, this is the game for you. That brings our total up to 14 deaths so far. And we've got a very dangerous dive left ahead of us. Time will be when we see the dancing at the end of this one. We have a new mechanic here of turbo, um, turbo bubbles, which also I call shine sparks. Oh yeah, I forgot about every dollar's match. So, hey, oh, I wanted to stretch that tether just a little bit. So, Whenever you're glowing on this, I call it a shine spark. Um, pretty much stealing that from Super Metroid. And you could use that shine spark to kill any moving blue object. And when I say moving blue object, I'm not just talking jellyfish and crabs. We are going to see coming up some really well hidden... Um, let me build a little momentum. And there we go. We're going to see some moving blue objects that are not just crabs or uh, jellyfish that we are going to take advantage of shine sparks on. We stretch our tether to reach up here. But you could tell I watched too many Super Metroid speedruns by talking about shine sparks like that because it's always a fun game. Speedrunning is just, you know, it's a great way to just have some fun and keep games nice and fresh. So we went up there to open this door right here. We are in a bubbled state while in the shine spark. We now need to remember to grab this. Up here, we use him. Anytime we hit an enemy with a shine spark, we keep that shine spark. So we wanted to hit that enemy and keep it so that we could get a, pretty much a double jump upwards. And then we go down here, avoid that air bubble because we are in a bubbled state. If you go into air when you're bubbled, well, it goes away, so. So here, moving blue objects. If your shine sparked, any moving blue object. So we could kill a couple of those spikes and get through the room extra quick. If you notice this spike is shiny, shiny spikes means it has a gem. Oh, get back here. Physics in this game is really cool because they can be unpredictable. If you don't have the shine spark here, you will not be able to get this gem and you will soft lock from it. Because if you die in this room without the shine spark, you can't go back unless you reset the entire run. Speaking of which, this run is going way better than I have had a run of this game go in forever. So it's probably a bit ahead of estimate at this point. You could grab those things to move them to uh, push down buttons. If you grab two, you can move both of them. We want to grab these two because we are going to take advantage of having them in this exact position for a perfect jump right there. It's an incredibly tight jump. We want to grab this here. 
and then grab this shine spark because we want activate this device, grab that. We'll keep this for a second. It's quicker to not detether and just do what we did right there. Keeping shine spark here lets you go up a touch quicker, saves you just a few frames, which always are good to save. We'll use that to go a little quicker once again. We are taking an intentional death in this room because we are going to run out of air if we want to grab this gem and open this door. So we would run out of air right there, so instead we just take the intentional death, making it nice and quick. We're going to keep hitting these targets to keep our shine spark alive, because as long as you keep hitting things, the shine spark will refresh itself. going to try a skip here and we got it stretching our tether out a little so to get this gem over there nope we need very good momentum and we want to keep this bubble which we lost so unfortunately that is a death we have to take so we want to keep this bubble my tether is using its uh momentum to cause some problems for me right now this is about one of the hardest spots in the game for speed running casually if you're going any percent it's not that hard but nope i am determined to get this it is incredibly tricky but there we go all right avoid that spike that was hidden off screen jump low stay under that air bubble all right there we go that's a lot better we have one more um, gem to collect in this run i'm going to make sure i get that coming up so these movable blocks also count as tether spots so i was able to get my air back by pulling this detether jump up get that shine spark which we'll use to get up here and then it's not explained why this one's electric, but that cylinder is electric. Let's you open this door. We have a room I call Indiana Jones Escape. It's kind of like that one earlier where all the spikes were shooting at me going sideways. This time they're all shooting at me going the other, going down. Once the final ones break, you could go to the uh, next room. Once again, we need break all of the shine sparks or shine sparks, all of the spikes. Here we have exploding mines and our final gem. We want to be very careful. My tether actually just did a little bit of its own decision making on where to go. Could have been kind of a hairy situation. We are going to jump between bullets and just hope everything works out good. Just avoid that jump right there. My tether, you might notice, is pushing me upward just a little my shine spark did not refresh in that was bad that was that was all me i would blame my tether physics for that one but that is all me something i mentioned earlier is we definitely want to wait for our shine spark to refresh it has to travel down the uh tether before we could grab it so always make sure you let it refresh before you take another hit also, you could kill these bullets when you're in a shine spark state without any problems. We are actually going to finish. Uh, time is coming up in about uh, five-ish seconds. Um, so time is coming up right now. And that would be time. And that went a whole lot quicker than I thought it would. Um, five more deaths that makes for a total of 19 deaths on this run i'll be donating two dollars for every death so that's going to be 38 dollars. i can even do math pretty quick when it's simple enough uh 38 dollars that i'm going to donate if anyone wants to get donations in coming up i'm coming up next i'm going to be running uh love three and there is a bid war for what levels i will do so so if you get those donations in right now, you could have a little fun deciding what 
what it is that I'm not practiced enough for that I'm going to face because it's hard to practice two different level sets. All right, thank you. That was a very fun looking run. And I have a feeling there might have been good karma on your side because there was a $15 anonymous donation in the middle of that that said, good luck, Hepawana, which was subsequently matched. So if that anonymous donor could just do that for every single run for the rest of the marathon, <laughs> I'm sure both Real Hope and the runners would appreciate that. Yeah, keep the money coming in and thank you. We will be going to a brief intermission, but when we come back, Heaven Wanna will be here again for a Love 123 remastered 100% run. Or classic, uh, depending on what people donate for. <laughs> 